I've been using Godot for about two months now and I thought what better way to test my skills than to make a game in a day. I've only really worked on my Metroidvania in the engine so it'll be interesting to see how it handles 3D. If you don't know, Godot is an open source game engine that uses a node based system to make objects that you can bring to life with your code. You can either use GDScript, which is kind of like Python, or you can use C Sharp, which is kind of like Java. I personally use GDScript just because it feels nicer. After getting a project set up, the next step was to come up with an idea. What I'll usually do to come up with ideas is just to get a random word generator and keep spinning it until I see something that clicks and that I can visualize in my head. And today I used a place generator and found the idea of a meat shop, which I thought could be really interesting. Now that I had a setting, it was time to come up with the game idea. My first thought was a fast paced game where you have to serve customers while dealing with evil spirits in the back. but. After considering the models I'd have to make, I realized that the modeling alone would take way too long. So I decided to get rid of the whole customer serving part and just made it about the player dealing with spirits in the back of a meat shop, maybe a freezer or something. It's a pretty simple hack and slash that's it's completely different from Vampire Survivor, not, not even inspired at all. Once the idea was set in stone, it was time to get modeling. Because I wanted to keep the model simple, I decided to use Blockbench which is a 3D modeling software that only uses blocks. It's the same program that Minecraft modders use, and if you've had trouble with Blender or other programs in the past, I would definitely recommend it for simple game assets. I ended up throwing some blocks together and made some models. I made a knife for our player, a ghoul to fight, and some meat and some bones for decoration. I made them pretty quick because I knew programming was gonna be an issue, especially when it came to any 3D stuff. Making the models was a really cool process that I've never really done before, and seeing them come to life at the end felt really rewarding. I'm actually now considering making a Pixel Horror 3D model kit and making it open source. So follow me on Twitter if you're interested and would like to see that become real. So it was time to throw these into Godot, and there definitely wasn't any issues at all when trying to get the models to work. Setting up a basic player was pretty easy. Godot gives you a basic template for movement and all I had to do was slap on a camera. That was pretty much the beginning of the end of the easy part of making this game though, because for some reason I decided it was absolutely 100% necessary for the meat on the hooks to be able to swing, which meant I had to understand Godot's joint system. Oh god. It's really not that complicated, but when you have no idea how anything works, it's pretty daunting. I ended up just scattering the meats randomly around the level. It would have been cool to generate it when the game starts to make it more unique for every experience, and it probably would have also been smart to scatter the bones around as well, but oh well. Now it's like you're really trapped in a fridge, and combined with some fog, it gives a nice creepy atmosphere. If I was Hideo Kojima, I'd stop here, but there's still time in the day and things I can add. I gave the player his knife and made a little animation. I wasn't really sure of it, which is why I changed it later, but now that we have a weapon, we can add in an enemy. I decided to keep it really simple and have a ghoul that just floats towards you. And when there are loads of ghouls, it can get pretty overwhelming, so you slice your way through them to keep the numbers down, but they'll just keep coming. And with the player able to kill the ghouls, it's only fair that they can do it back, so I made the player take damage when they hit and have a second of involvement vulnerability after being hit so they can try and escape. This is also where I changed the animation for the knife so that it reached out further so you could hit the enemies before they hit you. Then I added in some health UI and a death state that just stops you from moving. And by that point the day was done and I had to call that the finished game. It's pretty bare bones, but if I added more enemies and a progression system, it'd be a pretty solid meat beating simulator. Uh, I mean, a ha hack and slash, a, a pretty solid hack and slash game. Ideally, I would have given the gameplay a unique spin, but when it comes to challenges like this, it's good to keep it simple to really understand and get familiar with the engine. And I'm going to make this whole project open source so that anyone can look at the code and maybe you can add your own spin to it. Or maybe you could just use it to better understand Godot. But in exchange for this, you have to give me more challenge and game ideas. And check out some of my other videos, like my current series on the Metroidvania I'm making. It's pretty good, go check it out. So, how was the Godot 3D experience? Yeah, it was pretty good. Navigating everything was pretty intuitive and finding information on forums was pretty easy. And although Godot 4 changed some things up and not every site is up to date, you can still cross reference with the amazing documentation. Anyway, that's about it. Subscribe.